so. Rack it up, rack it up, I got a bit of the bank to make me a safe house. Shake it up, shake it up, she got her hands on her knees and she bringing a cake out. Smoke it up, smoke it up, I got some gas, some packs, I'm up in the greenhouse. Ball it up, ball it up, I'm with the game, we taking shots off the rebound. Fuck my post is really clear Welcome back to the channel. So it's Goodwood Festival Speed 2024. We've got a completely different look versus last year. Last year was a bit of a wedding marquee kind of vibe. This year, we've gone for a full container build. We went conventional last year and I don't think conventional is the look. So we've bespoke built a new container to house all of our products, have meetings inside, and most importantly, actually charge our phones. Yeah, and like, <laughs> The, the the key thing with this as well was to display the cars in like a really really cool way so obviously we've yeah, got them on the plinth so like customers can actually get up close experience them so we've got three cars on display we've got rabbi's 911 which you've seen before on the channel we've got a video on that one we've got the f87 that we used with the clothing collection and then around the back you'll have seen that recently on the channel the g87 with the vorsteiner kit um actually the most striking thing about our booth is uh these bad boys down here. It's been wait, a pretty, wait. pretty wet weekend so far. Yeah, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about these three cars and then we'll get in the mix and see what's about. Okay, so we're partway through day one at Goodwood and it's been really hot, probably hotter than Old Trace actually. My brain's frazzled, but we do have this amazing Auto Finesse M2 on our stand. We've commandeered it slightly for this weekend and changed it into the Club Regal M2. So thank you to the boys at Auto Finesse and thank you to James for lending it to us. Thank you to Identity Wraps and Blackfish for turning the wrap around so quickly. The idea with this is to tie in the merch collection with some of the cars we do in our workshop, obviously we've gone right through this car. Motor on three ways, full CSF package in the front. And we've got the wave track differential in the back and also Titan 7. So it's a really lovely example of the types of cars we put together in the workshop. And then obviously with the wrap, it ties in with the collection. So through the course of the weekend, we may well remove the bonnet, but I just want to show you a quick look inside the engine bay because this is where a lot of the good stuff is. So you'll see here, that's the Moton canisters obviously adjustment on there for the suspension we've got the csf charge cooler which is color matched actually to the seat the auto finesse branding colors and then in the front you'll see the auxiliary coolers and then the main cooler through the front as well this car makes i think i'm right in saying about 550 horsepower so with the suspension with the brakes is really a formidable track car. So another one of the really cool builds on the Regal Autosport Moton CSF booth is Nigel's G87 M2. So if you're already familiar with this build on our YouTube channel, you know some of the things that we've done with it, and now the build is more or less complete. So let's talk you through some of the bits and pieces. So obviously the standout thing on this particular car is the Vorsteiner VRS body kit. So we've got a carbon fiber bonnet on here, which you can obviously see exposed underneath. On top, we paint matched pretty much everything in the Zambor blue. We've left these grills on top, exposed carbon, so you can see it from the top end. These carbon fiber fenders here, which are much more muscular, much more aggressive with these carbon fiber gills. Coming down, just down here, we've got the front splitter as well. And then we've got the Titan 7 TC5 wheel. So at the moment, this is run a stagger setup. So there's a 19 at the front and a 20 at the rear. And the customer also has some um, 20, 20, as a Formula 1 car goes past. So he's got some Titan 7 TD6s, which is a six-spoke wheel in 20 inch as well. So we'll pop in, popping those on in the next couple of weeks, a little bit of a look change up. Heading over to the engine bay, there's a lot of carbon fiber that's replaced the plastic factory parts. So let's run you through some of that. So we've obviously got the Eventory intake, removing the plastic factory intake, and it also sounds a ton better. So you can actually hear sort of like the whooshing from the turbo, the lovely intake sounds that are hidden from the factory intake. The um, MHC carbon cooling shroud on there, so it replaces the plastic factory metal item, which is absolutely terrible to look at. We've obviously got the CSL brace, adds a little bit more rigidity and looks a lot better than the flimsy uh, metal item, which is black from the factory. 
inventory engine cover, and then most importantly, the CSF charge cooler, which replaces the plastic factory item. So basically the theme is with this car, replacing all the plastic garbage, upgrading it with carbon fiber or paint match parts. And then something that we've installed um, literally the start of this week is the Moton one-way coilover kit with front axle lift. So this car now is able to raise the ride height about 50 mil and then drop it back down again when the customer's cleared any obstacles. So despite having such a low and um, deep front splitter, you've got loads of clearance on the car. So absolutely perfect. And then coming around to the rear end of the car, we have the Vorsteiner VRS ducktail spoiler. So there's two options for these cars, the Vorsteiner kit. You either have this big wing on the factory um, metal boot lid, but this particular customer has gone for a more subtle look on the rear end of the car, but I think it looks absolutely amazing. The Vorsteiner VRS uh, rear diffuser as well. So this encapsulates the Remus exhaust system. So the factory balance is obviously um, like a black gloss color. This one's carbon fiber and goes the whole way around the Remus exhaust system. And of course, Remus secondary catback exhaust system. So this has a back box and um, removes the center size of the exhaust system. Sounds absolutely wild. Doesn't remove any of the uh, factory emission control components. That is everything you need to know about the GA7 M2 build that we've done. And if you want to learn anything more, then obviously head to the YouTube. I am with uh, Ravi from CSF Radiators, yet again in a different country. Same car on display. It's been round on the tour of the whole of Europe. How does it feel to have your car on display at Goodwood Festival of Speed? I, I honestly, Ryan, this is like the crescendo it's of a lot. Insane. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I mean, it went from the UK to Poland. It's back in the UK at literally the world's biggest car event. And uh, it's pretty amazing to have my car here. If you would have asked me this last year, we kind of like talked about it, kicked some tires, but the fact that it actually crazy. made it, everything worked out, it's awesome. Actually happened. Yeah. And uh, it's been a long few weeks and we're maintaining hydration levels to the optimum. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So there's been tons of people pouring all over the car uh, two days in, so over the last 48 hours. Have you been surprised by any of the questions or what do people really like about the car? Well, you know, I mean, you come to an event like this where it's like sensory overload of like yeah. a zillion cars, you know, new prototype cars, debut cars, you know, hypercars, supercars, what have you. The fact that people are spending so much time wanting to know about the car, asking questions, walking around. Yeah. It's humbling, you know, it means that they're like thinking that this is something that's worth spectacular to be like standing around. Yeah, so. fully. And people have really been rating this car like you've got. Um, the new uh, Bugatti being yeah. unveiled, like for example, and there's a like really, really high-end cars here. So um, the devil is in the detail with this thing. So we did a full YouTube video on this car in, was it Long Beach? Where were we at? Yes, Huntington Beach, Huntington you and I Beach, did sorry. that. Yep. So um, go back and see that video. It's quite a long one. We went through absolutely everything on the car. But for the new subscribers, I mean, hopefully we've got some new subscribers <laughs> since then. Let's just have a quick run through on like the key details of the car. Um, so it is a 911 SC originally. Yep. It's an 82 SC. It's uh, a full metal car. So basically there's no fiberglass whatsoever. The bonnet is shaped by hand. The deck lid in the back is shaped by hand. Uh, you know, widened steel fenders, widened front and rear bumpers. Um, so that's a big part of it. This is a key feature, 959 filler cap. Yes, it's the only 911 in the world that's got a 959 gas door location. I uh, was able to do that because we had the opportunity to 3D scan a hood, and there you have it. Cool thing about it as well is all of the, the what would be the bright work on uh, an original car is actually finished in the same Cerakote that you have on some of the products. So we have a key between product and car that I really love that. Yeah, you know, we wanted uh, one of the big ethos of the car was like, modern finishes, modern interpretation of what I thought, uh, you know, a recreation of a 73 RS would be. Yeah. So I really wanted to bring in different materials and the Cerakote finish was one of those things that you'll find throughout the car. It's on the wheel centers, it's on the trim, it's in the engine bay. It's on the handles, the which is away. today everyone has really wanted to pull the handles and see inside. Oh yeah. You've locked I mean, the car actually now. Yeah, absolutely. I had to not lock the car because a lot of people think this is like, you know, a dealership and they can just <laughs> sit, sit in it. So let me take my key. Open the door for you. And Come and see the interior, because yeah. that well, really uh, is where the fireworks start we'll, to happen. Yep, yeah, we'll take a look at the interior. So, Goyard bags? Yep, authentic Goyard tote bags. We took about 10 of them, cut them up. Um, it's laid out perfectly by Rogelio's upholstery out in California. Everything lines up vertically, diagonally, and horizontally. So, whatever location you look at, the Goyard is placed in strategic positions as of the part. 
And uh, yeah, it came out really nice. It's I'm really happy with it. One of the craziest interiors here at Festival of Speed, uh, which is nuts when you think of the types of cars on the display. Yeah, you know, I'm really happy we kind of like rolled the dice on this because, you know, the car itself is an amazing car, but that just is like that one extra notch that just takes it to the next level. Hey, it's risky. I wouldn't want to be the guy cutting those bags up. No, no, he did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's move around the back of the car. This is where a lot of the, well, all the noise comes from, all the drama, all the cool stuff back here. So, uh, 993 base engine, is yeah, that right? Yeah, so it's uh, started off as life as a 3.6 liter. It's been bored out to a 3.9 liter. Yep. Um, all of the best, uh, best of the best components. Sitting on top is the drive-by-wire Kinsler ITB setup with the billet plenum. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's next level. It's got a rye wire motorsports uh, harness on it. One mil spec connector, six bolts, drop the motor. Uh, really easy to work on, you know, six wigan clamps, take the plenum off. It's it's that's power part level. of the deal. That's one of the questions I've heard yep. a lot is what's the power level in the car? So this car is making 400 wheel horsepower, 330 torque. So it's an 1100 uh, kilogram car, 2400 pounds. And it's one of those things that it just flies. So still short wheel based car with 400 wheel horsepower. You're actually insane. Yeah, and it's got a G50 <laughs> trans to hold the power down. It's got a yeah. wave track diff. It's uh, It's legit. I think the one thing that people are surprised by is just how far you've gone through this whole car. So it's not just a styling exercise. It's not just the interior, although the interior is really spectacular. Really, underpinnings have been the whole way through. Brakes, wheels, gearbox, engine. It is the full package. Yeah, you know, I was very fortunate to have a great builder in SV Auto uh, really kind of go on this journey with me to build what I thought was my ultimate 911. And it was like no stone unturned. We literally thought of every detail and said, what can we do to make it better? What out? What is out there in the aftermarket or yeah. what can we create ourselves to really add to this car? Well, there you go. The ultimate 911 is a potentially the ultimate show. Have you had a good time displaying I've it? I've had a blast. It's been great. It's surreal to be at Goodwood again. Uh, you know, thanks to the guys at Regal for having me in my vehicle and uh, looking forward to bringing back the next project. Hopefully in the next two days, we'll get some sunshine. Absolutely. If you absolutely hate your eardrums, this is the place to be because you get to hear all the cars firing up, getting ready to go up the Goodwood Hill. Right here, we've got a Cosworth DFV. I'm going to stink around and hang around a little while because I have to hear this fire up. I don't think there's anywhere else in the world that you'd have a Jack LeMond car, a long tail McLaren F1, next to one of my personal favorites, 318 IS STW car. So these E36s were like super low so a lot of people that are building street e36s right now are basically trying to emulate the look of these cars so big racy wheels things on 18s flared arches they're actually tubbed inside as well so um yeah i built a car on airlift that kind of looked like this to see one of these now then up close is pretty cool another two iconic cars side by side that's how hectic it is in there uh lance also obviously next to the renault 5 maxi these two going up the hill will be something to definitely look at, especially with the wet weather. So I think we'll have a lot of sideways action today as well. Ash has gone absent because he doesn't want to damage his credibility any further. He can take the Formula One cars. I'll take, yeah, I'll take the cool cars. So um, this is a, well, we call them the Batmobile, but it's a CS so, or CSL. So this is the grandfather of all of the lightweight cars you'll see from BMW. Well, lightweight. I think a lot of them are actually quite heavy nowadays, but the whole lightweight concept came from this car. 
It's got even got a tillet in it actually, which is quite cool. We fit those in the workshop. And then next to it, we've got an RS, I think it's a 3100, 3100. So it's a 3.1. I'm going to get these things wrong now. I think it's a Cologne V6 in it. But these things sound absolutely nuts. They've got lots of like trick bits. I think they've got a like gear driven fuel pump on these. So in this era, we were still on mechanical injection. So um, you'll see inside here, the fuel pump's driven off of the camshaft and then the, um, the fuel runs through these lines into the, the throttle bodies essentially, but they're mechanical injectors rather than the conventional electronic ones that we're used to. So being able to go around and actually look at these cars in detail is one of my favorite bits of Goodwood. So we're just walking upon some Audi tradition. Don't really know exactly what it is, but I guess it's like Audi Avenue or some description. So we've got all kinds of Audi Le Mans prototypes. We've got GT cars. So we've got um, just behind Sam here, we've got 2011 um, R18 TDI Ultra. So these cars were obviously absolutely dominating Le Mans, but one of the most interesting things for me is that people obviously think that they ran on diesel, but really they ran on something that's more closer to sort of like jet fuel. Like aviation fuel, like basically. Aviation fuel, yeah. So you've got all these petrol cars, and you've got these guys turning up looking like they're in diesels, but they're really not. It's so far to they're, they're like jet fighters, basically. <laughs> So I've just had a look at some of the Audis here and it looks like what they're trying to do is show the evolution of their technology from, so it says horseless to hybrid. So we've got some of the really early, these were like high speed uh, vehicles, super lightweight. So the, uh, the Audi like aluminium thing came from these auto union cars. And we moved through obviously the Group B stuff. And then we've got the e-tron over there. And Ash has just told me that it actually has a DTM engine that powers the battery charging. So it's an electric vehicle but uses the DTM. So the, I believe it's the DTM engine. So I think they, they breeze the engine out of some kind of series. They basically charge the electric batteries up. Yeah. Which, uh, and that did the Dakar, right? That That's did the Dakar, Dakar yeah. Um, was it Carlos Sainz uh, Senior drives that as well. So not only will you see famous cars around here, you'll see famous drivers as well. And um, we've got some of the Quattros firing up now to go up the hill. These are some of the best sounding, most dramatic vehicles. The way they launch off the line and then slip up the hill is insane. This is one of my favorite cars every year up the hill. It is so wild, R32 Skyline. So um, these were built to, I think, Group A spec. I uh, should probably actually read the placard before I start running my mouth, but I'm pretty sure they're Group A. And um, these basically came in just after the E30s and just decimated everything. They completely dominated. And uh, there's a good reason why, and it's inside the engine bay. So they are uh, RB26s, uh, iconic engine obviously with the twin turbos, um, literally cleaned up. Turbo power came in in, um, what sort of year do you think these came in? Like 96, I mean, 98? I mean, last time I called uh, an R33 and R32, so oh, I don't yeah. really think I'm the person to ask. Can't come to Goodwood without mentioning the Goodwood sculpture. Um, and this year, it looks like MG were the highest bidder. <laughs> I actually had one of these tiny little things uh, when I was 21 years old and uh, I destroyed it. I lowered it, put it on wheels, but this one looks absolutely immaculate. It was the same color, same interior. It's a bit of a trip down memory lane, to be honest. I wish I still had it. So BMW have run out of ideas on styling recently, and this is where they're now taking their cues from. 
this <laughs> this was actually a design study by i hope I'm saying this right batone and um actually in uh it's been really like instagram hot like people have been repost like lots of fashion pages have been reposting images of this actual car so i'm pretty sure if you hang around this one you'll see some influences so as if azonda uh wasn't special enough this one is actually one of a kind uh it's called an attack which sounds quite aggressive but it is for circuit use um so basically this vehicle uh the geezer who owns it's called andy bruce it's a one-off track version full carbon fiber massive wing on the back extra vents in the front um it's amazing that people will want to do something like this like to take something already special and make it individually unique is pretty cool so many details on this thing it's insane my favorite modification that they've made to the car though have a look at the number plate it doesn't matter how advanced your engineering gets there's still space for zip ties so a quick little shout out to rolls royce obviously the factory is like literally a stone's throw away from here you pass it almost every time if you're coming from southampton to get to goodwood motor circuit it was really cool to see some of the brand new rolls royces here I think Ash thinks he's going to get like a press car or something for shouting him out. Send but it to me. <laughs> we got Spectre and we've got a new Cully over there as well. So serious amount of luxury in this corner. So so me and Ryan were just talking a little bit off camera, like why sort of like we like Rolls Royce, even though we don't drive them, like all that kind of stuff. But it's just really cool to see a brand that is kind of like king of customization. So like anything you can possibly dream of, they will essentially do for any sort of price. Yeah, in the same way that we'll modify a car and make it unique to people's tastes. These boys just do it for the factory. They're like, whatever you want, we'll make it happen. So it's pretty cool, actually. This is one of the best cars here, regardless of price point. Coolest styling, weirdest, nichest interior, and it's got a 16 valve inside. So this was Citroen's sporty BX. Uh, I don't really think they sold very many, which is what makes it so special. If you were to see this in a car park down Tesco, it would definitely be the only one. So. Although the Zondas are great, there's six of them. There's definitely only one of these here. It's the end of Festival of Speed 2024. We are absolutely knackered. We've been working for a while. I mean, working, we've been on site, ready to go. 7am right, some... to 7pm. Some of us have been working. Yeah. <laughs> I've just been wandering around. <laughs> but it's um, actually for the people that are here are on site doing their thing. It's really long hours. And yes, it's really fun. There's lots of cool cars, but it's, it's graft really. And you got to battle the weather. You got... 150,000 people they reckon on Yeah, 150, right? 200,000, something crazy like that across the four days. We've had some amazing conversations. We've met some old customers that have had cars we've tuned in the past. They've got new projects they want to inquire about doing some upgrades on. And we've got some fresh new customers that we've never met before, which is great because, you know, at the end of the day, all we want to do is make things really fast and really fun. Well, basically just have some fun. That's all we're here for. Do a good job, have some fun. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, the cars you've had on the display. We've really enjoyed the show. Hopefully, we've given you a bit of flavour of Goodwood while you've been sat at home. And um, yeah, if you get the chance to come, I would really recommend it. It's an amazing show. Yeah, let's see you next year. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't done already, then give us a thumbs up. If you want to watch some of our other videos that YouTube thinks you'll like, then click up here. If you want to watch some other videos in the same playlist, then click here. And if you haven't done already, then hit the subscribe button right here.